All right. So we're in week three, and uh, I, how is the Cloud9 environment working for you guys? Yeah? Okay, working through some of the quirks of it, and got to make sure that you have the run button running, and so it's red, not green, right? Because sometimes the patch, if, you, if that's not running, MySQL is not running, and Apache's not running. And, okay. All right, good. That's good. Hey. Hi. How are the roads, April? Yeah, you know, so I, w I looked at my car, and like when it started coming down, it was like, oh my goodness, this is like awful. But I was like, this is going to end soon, and I am so hoping that when I go out there, I have nothing on my car because the rain washed it all off. Because <laughs> it's raining right now, right? What? Isn't it, isn't it raining? Yep. yep. And, are the, and the roads are now just fine, right? Yep. <laughs> yep. It's all going to be iced over by the Oh, day. no. It's not going to get, it's warming up. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Is it going to snow more tomorrow? Like a little bit of sleet overnight or something, but. Um, I got to work tomorrow night and we get screwed over when it snows. Oh, because they <laughs> Cause don't. Because everyone's them. like, oh, I'm not driving in that, and then they get delivery and make our drivers do it. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not good. Good chips. There you go. Snow tires then. <laughs> okay, so we're in week three. Here's what I'm going to cover today. I think my lecture should take about 30 some odd minutes, maybe 30 minutes. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, it should still be review, okay? Right? MySQL data types. I will go over a certainly not an exhaustive list of the data types. Um, removing database tables, deleting rows, uh, a few more specific selections. And in keeping with review, all programming languages have the ability to loop. PHP is no exception. I'll go through how you do looping in PHP. So you'll go, oh yeah, that looks really familiar. Um, one of the things I want to point out to you is if you, oh yes, I have to log in here. Screen. Okay. Um, if you look at the course syllabus, and you scroll down to the bottom here, you will see that project one is due week five. So that's in two weeks. Okay? So that'll be due by the end of class, so that would mean for you it's due Thursday. Because today's Tuesday. Okay, so by the end of class Thursday, you have to show me your project one running. Speaking of project one, let's go through what project one is. This, this Thursday? Next this is week three. So that would be two weeks and two days or something like that. Okay. All right. So project one. Okay. So project one is worth 20 points. It's due at the end of class week five. You guys know what Mad Libs are? Okay. Do you still play Mad Libs? Did you play Mad Libs when you were a kid? I love them. I like the paper. Do they still have the paper ones? Can you buy the books? I think or, so. You can? Probably all online now. All right. So so this was this game where you uh, you sat with your friend and they asked you, give me a noun, <coughs> give me a verb, give me, me an adverb and an adjective. It's probably a secretive way for English teachers to teach proper you know, English to kids and get them to do some activity. I think it's great. It's probably invented by teachers. Uh, and then you uh, create some really whacked out story, okay? All right, so you're going to write a, um, you're going to create a simple Mad Lib web page, okay? And you are going to have um, a form that's going to ask for a noun, a verb, an adverb, and an adjective. And it will inject those into a story that you create and outputs it below the input boxes, the form, okay? You will be saving all of the inputs and the generated story to a database. Okay? You will then, when the user presses submit on your form, you will display all of the completed stories below the form in order of newest to oldest. Okay? So I know this is not a form, but imagine that you have a form and you're asked to enter in a noun, a verb, an adjective, and an adverb. Okay? 
So you enter in that. Do you walk your blue dog quickly? That is hilarious. Okay. So um, you're going to put all of your stuff into your, you're going to create a projects directory and create a project one under that. Okay. So you code your solution, keeping all of the code in project one in the project one folder. Okay. Don't forget to make backups. All right. Here's what you need to get full credit at a minimum. Okay, you can do more if you want, but at a minimum to get full credit, you need to uh, make sure that your database stores a noun, a verb, an adjective, an, an adverb, and the completed story. All right. Now, if you want to do more, you can do more. I don't care. Okay. If you want to have fun with it? Have fun with it. All right. You want to do the minimum? Do the minimum. Okay. The completed story should be displayed newest to oldest. Does anybody remember how you do that when you do a database query? I think order by order by, order by. Yeah, okay by. I think that's in your book chapter four which we haven't gotten to yet can't remember or you can look it up um, the page should have some styled elements what do I mean when I say you should have some styled elements which should look have? nice what do you use to make it look like nice CSS, CSS. CSS. or you could Figure out how to use Twitter Bootstrap or something like that. Okay, whatever. Um, yes, have some styled elements. Okay, I, I, you don't have to have a whole lot. Um, this is a programming class, but you know you are putting an HTML page together. <laughs> All right, so have some CSS. Okay, then you will show me your completed solution for sign off. You will compress. Um, your projects project one directory and submit it to blackboard the other thing i want you to do and you'll see the command for that in the week three test drives because i updated that is make sure you use mysql dump to dump your database okay you will dump that to an sql file make sure that's in your projects one directory so i have your database too fair enough okay all right any questions about this, this is Pretty straightforward, what I'm asking for? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, one thing I want to let you know is on um, I will not be here on Thursday. However, you still need to get your, your, your uh, week three stuff signed off if you haven't done that already. You can, um, you can get them signed off today from me, from Aaron and myself. Or uh, if you don't and you want to get them signed off Thursday, so make sure that you know you tell your classmates that you see that we are having class on Thursday. Aaron will be here to check off your your labs. I will be at a PHP conference. Okay, and Blackboard still works, so you can please make sure you submit to uh, Blackboard. All right, sound good? Okay, so again, you know, it's a lab day, but Aaron will be here to check off your labs. If you get them signed off today, you don't have to come on Thursday, all right? But you still want to be working on Chapter 4 for the next week, okay? All right. Any questions about that? All right. Okay, let's go to Week 3. So, MySQL data types. This is not, as I mentioned, an exhaustive list of the data types. These just happen to be the most common ones that you would use. Okay, um, so you can create an integer. You've been doing these already with uh, when you've been creating your database for the email list for the Elvis store. I think you've been working on right. Okay, who's been working on chapter three? I haven't had time at all because my other class, freaking project. Am I beating you up in my Java class too? <laughs> no, all the programming, all this stuff is fine. Oh, okay. It's just the other one takes a lot of time. It's easy, right. but it takes a lot of time. Okay. <laughs> I know. I know. Okay, so we have integers. You can specify a width of up to 11 digits for an integer. And these are the range values for them, for, uns for signed and then unsigned. You can have a floating point value. The M specifies the width. The D specifies the uh, number um, uh, precision past the decimal place. Okay. Uh, 
double, same thing, only it's double precision, twice the precision of a floating point value. And then decimal is, um, I'm still trying to like wrap my head around the difference between these and floating points. Each decimal corresponds to one byte. Oh, okay, I see. An un okay, an unpacked floating point number that can be unsigned. In unpacked decimals, each decimal corresponds to one byte. Defining the display length m and the number of decimals is required. Okay, numeric is a synonym for decimal. Okay, all right, moving on to string types. So we have char, and that is a fixed length string, okay, between 1 and 255 characters in length, and varchar, which is a variable length string. So what types of fields would you use a varchar for, and what types of fields might you use a char for? Yes. Excellent example. And how about varchar? Last name or every name. Or Any name, because they're they vary, right? If you know, or you can conveniently, from a usability standpoint, um, force your users to create fixed character. I mean, you can't always do that, and that's not always a great thing to do. Fixed character fields are far more efficient to use in a database than variable character. Okay, but that said, databases today are pretty darn efficient. Okay, I mean, <coughs> um, like phone numbers, you can force, you can, uh, maybe you can have somebody enter in a phone number in various formats, and we'll talk about regex later, regular expressions later. You can strip all that off and enter in the 10 digit number, and it's always 10 digits, right? Or 10 digits and an extension or whatever, okay? All right, so that's the difference between char and varchar. And then we have date time types. We have date, we have date time, we have timestamp, time, and year, and you can see the formats for that. Um, what's so magical about January 1st, 1970, okay? So this is the beginning of time. The beginning of time. It is the beginning of time. <laughs> what is the, what it, it is. It's, it's the start of the epoch for what? UTC. What's that? UTC. Is UTC? I thought UTC stands for Universal Time Code. But you, but you said for the beginning of Unix time, you would be ding, 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 correct. It's actually not true, okay? Because Unix time actually started like about four months earlier, but um, it was officially released in the wild. Uh, they just thought it would be really cool if we officially released it to the wild January first, nineteen seventy. Okay, so. And they all had a disco party. And they all had a disco party. <laughs> so this came up in another class, actually. So do you, does anybody remember the big Y2K scare? Yeah. Yeah, the Y2K scare. So they hired all of us programmers. Actually, we was doing something else. But, you know, this was the, COBOL is the language that wouldn't die. And then, of course, all of the old COBOL programmers that were about to, like, lose their jobs. It's like, oh, Y2K is coming up. So basically, a bunch of, the, the programming world convinced the rest of the business world, hey, pay us a ton of money, and we'll make sure that your systems don't crash when we go to uh, year 2000. I can just imagine people saying, hey, do you have a Unix system? And they go, yeah, OK, great. We'll, we'll, you can pay us money. We'll make sure it doesn't crash. We don't really have to do anything, because when is <laughs> we'll be dead in, 19, in 2637 or whatever it is. Sometime in 2037, I'll be dead. Maybe. Maybe I won't be dead. But maybe I will be dead then. I don't know. Okay? So, but they, you know, they don't care, right? But yeah, here, pay us some money and we'll make sure your system doesn't crash because your system's not going to crash. <laughs> okay? It might in 2037. Now, if you didn't have a Unix system, they would say, okay, yeah, you need to get a Unix system and you can pay us for that too and we'll make sure you get a Unix system or something like that. I don't know. I like to joke about that. Um, all right. Okay, so viewing the data types of a table. We actually did this, um, but I'll do it again. So if I, for example, 
I gotta scroll down. There we go. Why can I not see my sh Do you ever have this problem? There it is. <laughs> okay. So use Northwind. All right. And then let's say we want to show tables. Okay, so I have a table in here called products. So if I say um, describe, and I know your book sh showing everything like this. You don't have to. You can type lowercase. Okay? Describe products. And this will show you the all the fields, their types. So you've got some int 11s here. That's the maximum int size. That's what it defaults to. Bar chart 40 for the product name, quantity per unit, bar chart 20, decimal, uh, unit price. Okay. All right. And then we, you can see here, oh, I got the primary key for product ID and it's auto increment. So you get a lot of statistics on your fields here by saying describe the table. Yes. So the auto increment one. It's at 11. It's set to 11 right now, but when it hits 12, will it do it on its own, and you got to change it? Where does it say, oh, it's set to 11. Yeah. Oh, 11. This like is 11 higher, digits. Yeah, I know, but if it gets higher than that, will it do it automatically? Oh, like, say it, it was at 3, oh, it'll and roll, it went up it'll roll to over. 1,000. So it'll yeah. increment that. Actually, it will increment to... Where are you? It'll increment to, see, as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's going to roll over to this number right here. Uh, okay, that's what's going to happen. Okay. Because it's only the, it's like, I don't know, 32 bits or 60, I think this is 32 bits. So it's like a 32-bit side number. And when you hit the end, it's going to roll over to back down here. OK. OK, because that's just how computers work. <clears throat> I know that was an extremely important question. So no, that's all right. <laughs> it's a good question. OK. Um, so that's how you view. See, I, so that's what I did here, describe products. OK, removing databases. Everybody heard of this uh, comic strip XKCD? This is Little Bobby Tables. OK, uh, I'll talk, uh, I don't know if it's in week five that I talk about this or not. Aaron, do you remember, did I talk about sanitizing your database in week five? I don't remember what week it was. Yeah, so uh, I'll talk about something nasty called SQL injection hacks. OK. And I'm pretty sure there are still websites out there that do not sanitize their input fields. So the bottom line is this. Imagine that you put an SQL query, a legit SQL query inside of a field okay, that you enter. And a lot of those fields go directly into a query. OK. And if you don't protect against that, you can do some nasty stuff. Like you could put a semicolon at the end saying, OK, that's the end of that SQL statement. And you could say drop table, <laughs> right? So this is how Bobby got his name, Little Bobby Tables. <laughs> He's just decided to remove the uh, grade databases in his school. Oh my gosh. Are you allowed to name your kid that? Yes, they must be. They must be. This is what happens when you have like parents that? who are programmers. <laughs> I, I'm <laughs> sure this is a joke. What people have named their kids. I'm going to be one of those people. <laughs> you're going to name your kid. You're going to have a boy, name him Little Bobby. Well, it doesn't have to be. It could be whatever. Little Bobby Tables, right? All right. All right. So this is how you would. Um, so a couple things. Once a table is created, you cannot overwrite it using a new create table query. So there's a couple ways you can remove table. Actually, there's really only one way you can remove the table, 
and that would be drop table. You can, however, delete all of your data in a table by saying delete from table without using a qualifier for from. Now, generally speaking, you use the delete command to delete targeted rows of data, OK? Like delete from this table where column name equals something, OK? So for example, if I, um, I'm going to grab this right here. I'm going to use k marks 1. And I'm going to say select star from full, not that many, full name. OK, so here are all of the full names I have in my full name table. So I could say delete from full name where first name equals Ken. Great. So I do a select star, and there we go. All right. Again, this should be review. You can do more specific selections. OK, you could say select instead of star, star you could say, oh, I just want to uh, select these two columns. Well, that happens to be the only columns, right? And I'll select first name and last name from full name where last name equals marks. OK? That. I'll bring that in here. And that's going to give me my sister and my brother. Uh, what else? Oh, you can combine, like, here. You could say, oh, I would like. You could you can combine your searches with the and clause or and keyword. So let's say I want to see if my sister is in the table. Okay. All right. So. That's a little review on MySQL. Looping in PHP. All programming languages have it. We have while, do while, not used very often, for and for each. Um, yeah, I am. Um, who's had me for intro to programming? That's the JavaScript. Yeah, yeah the JavaScript. OK. And what did I say the difference between where you would use a while loop and a for loop? Uh, this is a horrible while example. While is when you don't know how right. much you're a while loop is, to. Yes. You typically use a while loop for, you're looking for like a particular true, event. And a for true. loop, yeah, while true, do this. And you only have the conditional inside of a while loop. You typically use a, this is a counted loop. You can use, you can create a while loop with it. But it's better to use a for loop for a counter loop, because the for loop has an initializer and the conditional, and it has the incrementer or decrementer, too, right? And that's more well, that's well suited for a counting loop. That's lazier. It's, yeah, well, it's, you <laughs> In you a could, good way. Yeah, <laughs> in a good way, right. So, so I have some, anyways, I gotta, I'll fix that. So where are we at? We are in, let's get rid of this one for now. And here we go, week three. OK, so I have a, is that it? That's actually, I don't know why I called it count up. It's counting down. <laughs> OK, so here's the PHP code uh, for, for the count up one. So let me run that. Uh, not there. Here we go. So. We run that. You'll see I've got 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, right? So that's what we would get right here. OK? Do while. I like this example. Here we go. So let's say I want to simulate uh, the rolling of a six-sided die. Who's used the RAND function before in another programming language? And what does RAND typically return? 
you to you. And the value is between zero and one. That's right, a floating point value between zero and one. So if you wanted to write code like this, you would have to do additionally what? Multiply the value by the maximum side of the dice, like if it's a six-sided dice, then by six and add one, right? And make sure that it's all cast to an integer, okay? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't add one, then it'll be zero to five. And most dice don't start with zero, they start with one, okay? Or if it was a polyhedral dice, like a 20-sided die, for those who play D&D, then, you know, you would just multiply it by 20 and add one. Okay, so I have this code in here. This is cool because this, you just put one in the rand function here, and a comma six, and that'll just give you a number between one and six. It's awesome. Okay, and we're going to run the, this loop until <coughs> the die rolls are equal to each other. So that's this guy right here. So let's go run that. Hey, look at that. I only got one run. I feel disappointed. There we go. Now I feel better. Oh my gosh. One, two, three, four, six, and five. That doesn't seem very random, does it? These seem a little more random. Let's see that again. Random. There. Oh, look at that. <laughs> okay, so it just keeps rolling them until it, uh, they're equal at the end, and then it exits the loop. Okay? Can make a game out of that. For loop. Should do a coin toss and see if you win six times in a row. That's right. <laughs> okay, so we got a for loop. Uh, the difference between for and while loop, this is identical to what you learned in JavaScript. Okay, I've got a uh, initializer, conditional, incrementer, decrementer, whatever. Okay, so if I run that. That'll give me zero through nine with commas after them. Okay, for each, who's, who's seen something like this before? Okay, so the idea is, I mean, let's say you want to parse out an array. The idea is iterating through all elements in an array. Okay, so let's say I have an array of error messages, something like this. She says for each. Yes, for each. Okay, so the first um, parameter in here is the array. And then you say as, and whatever variable you want to uh, use to represent each element. Okay, so this will just print out the first time through something's wrong, then a break, then what happened, then a break, then oops, then a break. Okay? Isn't it like saying for each error in error messages? It is. That is, I would much, in, in fact, I've used programming languages that say that. <laughs> That's how I read it in Java, Java the Java. Yeah, is form. it Java or JavaScript that does that? There's a Java for each loop. It's not, I don't know if it's I called that. I thought that was the colon operator, but yes. Okay. I just know that's how they read it. Yep. So you would say for each error in error messages. That makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? It and in a lot, lot of programming languages, that's exactly how it is. For each, whatever the variable name in, and then the <laughs> name of it, right. But of course, this is PHP, and they have to do things different. So that's where there's a change in the syntax. So let me go ahead and run that. For each error message in error. Okay. So Displaying multiple rows from a table using looping with my SQLI fetch array. Okay, and I have a link here to encourage you to go to php.net so you can look up what it does. It fetches a result row, fetch a result row as an associative as an associative array is what it means. Okay? A numeric array or both. Associative, a numeric this is just like not great English. Fetch a result row as an associative, a numeric array, or both. Okay, I think I understand. All right, let me actually, I think I can illustrate it better by walking through the code. All right, so here's my MySQL connect statement. 
Okay, so I'm going to connect to the Northwind database, right, or die trying. Now I'm going to build a query. The query is select product name, unit price, and units in stock. Okay, those are three fields out of the, I don't know, seven or eight fields in this table. Okay, so I just want these fields from products. What am I going to get? How many rows should I be getting? I mean, all of them, right? Okay, I should get all of the rows from this query. Okay, so that's the query. I call my SQLI query passing in the, co the database connection as the first um, argument and the query as the second. Call that or die trying. Okay, if it's successful, in this variable result, I will have all of the rows for the three fields. Each row is an array that is the key is going to be the field name for each element, okay? And the value is going to be what's contained in there, all right? So do you remember when I went here and did, well, I'll just do it. Select star from, well, here, let's do it this way. Let's go grab this select product name from products. Paste that in. What did I do? Oh, you, what did I do wrong? What did I forget to do? Use Northwind. Really? Northwind. I, I, <laughs> Northwind. Oh, that's from the Uper. Okay. Use North. That's how they say it up there. There we go. Now, okay. All right. So these are all the rows with these three fields, okay? So that's what I'm getting returned in result. And what I want to do is I want to just get each row and deal with each row at a time. So I have to do that in a while loop, okay? All right, so let's go back to this piece of code. All right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to echo out, I'm going to create a table, and the only style element I have in here is right here, okay? So you normally don't do this but I wanted you to be able to see it, okay? You can certainly, you're gonna see a lot of table usage in PHP, but your CSS would be external. This is all just to put the information in a viewable table? Yes, Okay. right, because it doesn't look as good when you don't have a border yeah. in it, right. So I've got my table, I start my table, and I've got a header, and I'm actually only gonna list out two fields, product name and unit price. Okay, I could do all three, but I'd have to edit the code, and I'm lazy. Okay, so now I call my SQLI fetch array, all right? And what that's going to do is that's going to go and give me this, I'm going to get return this row. So as long, I call this, and as long as I have rows to process, this is legit. What will happen is I'll get a zero or a false returned if I go off, you know, if I'm out of rows, which will allow me to drop out of the loop, okay? And I, if we go to, not there, but let's go, let's see what it says. We'll talk, find the return value, the result. The result set identifier, or, that's not, oh, return values. It returns an array of strings that correspond to the fetched row, or null, if there are no more rows in the result set. So null, is like zero, kinda, okay, but the while loop will exit. Okay. While loop exits on null. Yeah. Yep. Just in PHP though, right? Probably. Yeah, okay. just in PHP. It's a it, it's equivalently it, it's equivalent <laughs> to a false. A okay. zero is equivalent to a false. A null is equivalent to a false. Okay. All right. So, um, okay. So the first time through. I'm going to get on the product name key, I'm going to get chai. On the unit price key, I'm going to get 18. Okay. Unit stock, I'd get 39. Well, actually, yes. So let's go back to this. Actually, I'm only dealing with product name and unit price. Okay. So, and I did that because I wanted all the code to fit on the same page here. That's why I did it. 
So I'm going to echo out a row with a table data item. And here's the row array, right? And I want to get the value as identified by product name key. Okay, I'll put that, close the table data item, start another table data item, and then I'm going to get the value as identified um, in this row by the key unit price. Close the table, the table data item, close the table row. Okay, then I'm all done with the loop, close the table, close the database connection. We good? Okay, so if I run that, This is it. There we go. That's all of them. I want to try to pronounce all those. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's it. I'm done lecture. That's it? Yes.